Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure of the molecule ATP. You should then be able to describe how ATP can act as an immediate source of energy. Now in previous videos we looked at carbohydrates and triglycerides. We've seen that these are used as long-term energy storage molecules. For example the molecule glycogen can be hydrolyzed to produce glucose and then this glucose can be used as a source of energy through respiration. Now the problem is that glucose contains a great deal of stored energy. In fact, much more energy than would ever be required by any single process in the cell. This means that cells need a way to transfer the energy from the glucose molecule in smaller, more useful amounts. And to do this, cells use the molecule adenosine triphosphate, or ATP for short. And in fact, the energy released in the aerobic respiration of one glucose molecule can be transferred to over 30 molecules of ATP. I'm showing you the structure of ATP here, and it's really important that you learn this. ATP contains the base adenine bonded to the pentose sugar ribose. Together, we call this part of the molecule adenosine. On the other side of the ribose, there are three phosphate groups, so this means that ATP is a nucleotide. Now, there's one key property of ATP that you need to understand. It only takes a small amount of energy to break the covalent bond holding the last phosphate group in place. But when this bond is broken, a great deal of energy is released, and this energy can then be used by processes in the cell. Breaking this bond requires a water molecule, so this is an example of a hydrolysis reaction. I'm showing you the hydrolysis of ATP here. The reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme ATPase, which is also called ATP hydrolase. In this reaction, we're producing the molecule adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. We're also releasing the phosphate group. The lowercase i tells us that this is inorganic phosphate, in other words, not attached to a carbon-containing molecule. Now, one idea you need to understand is that ATP is not a long-term energy store like glycogen or triglycerides. ATP is more of an immediate energy source, transferring energy from the sites of respiration to the parts of the cell which require energy. So I'm showing you here ATP hydrolysis, providing energy to different processes in the cell. These processes include active transport, muscle contraction, and the formation of large molecules such as proteins. Now the ADP and phosphate that are released are then recycled back to ATP, and this takes place during respiration in animal cells, and in both respiration and photosynthesis in plant cells. Because we're adding a phosphate back onto ADP, scientists call this a phosphorylation reaction. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme ATP synthase. And because water is released, this is an example of a condensation reaction. And we'll see much more about how ATP is formed in the topics on respiration and photosynthesis. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the structure of ATP and how ATP can act as an immediate source of energy.